Today on the Topic Show, UAW President September 29th live stream, but without censorship and with my charming personality, GOP debate highlights of Tim Scott, Chris Christie, Mike Pence, and Doug Burgum, Elon Fire's entire election integrity stat, Lucid opening their first plant in Saudi Arabia to sort of make vehicles there, Carl Icahn selling his remaining share of Xerox for $552 million, Epic Games is laying off 16% of their staff, and McKinsey is agreeing to pay $230 million off of their involvement in the opioid crisis. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder released twice today. Gotta say it's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of October, so if you can click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Lucid opening their first plant in Saudi Arabia to kind of make vehicles there, sort of, not, not really. They're actually going to take fully developed kits from the United States and they're going to ship them. So they're opening the plant technically in King Abu Dhabi Economic City near Judea on Wednesday. And the factory is going to be the first international plant will initially focus on reassembling vehicle kits sent over from the United States. And this is when asked for comment, the CEO said, quote, with support of the Saudi government, we are proud to drive local development in the technology industry, unquote. And that's again from Peter Rollinson, their current CEO. They also said, quote, we look forward to developing and delivering Saudi assembled cars to consumers in Saudi Arabia and beyond. Saudi Arabia's powerful public investment fund, PIF, this is unquote, apologies, is controlled by the Saudi government and they are Lucid's largest shareholder. Now, the Saudi government also has an agreement with Lucid to purchase up to 100,000 vehicles over a 10-year period. That's a lot of government EV vehicles. Now, the weirdest thing about this whole arrangement, the new factory will initially deliver Lucid vehicles that are already assembled. So, oddly enough, they're going to assemble them in the United States like they normally do. And it sounds like they're going to then disassemble them for shipping, send them to Saudi Arabia, and then reassemble them for reasons. Now, in the United States, in order to say made in the USA, the components have to be 75% or greater. So I could say this table right here is 100% made in the USA by a Cuban, though I am obviously an American citizen and I was born here, but all the components of this table were made in the USA. You have the epoxy, the wood, the steel legs, you have the screws, there was a whole, the silver coins you can't see, Fitch American currency from back from U.S. currency is worth something. But in this case, it sounds like it's going to be made in Saudi Arabia, but really, at the current moment, it's going to be reassembled. And perhaps this is so that they could lay out the new factory in Saudi Arabia, and they can then teach the employees to put together. And that, that might make a little bit of sense. I think that might be the only logical reason why, again, you would take a vehicle in the United States, it's already assembled. It's here in the United States assembled, disassemble it, ship it to Saudi Arabia, and then assemble it there. So perhaps this is a good training exercise and then they'll have employees in Saudi Arabia build it together. But it's no surprise that they're building a factory there. It is their largest shareholder, which, okay, it makes sense. They're very, obviously very invested in the company. And Saudi Arabia, they've been trying to pivot away from the traditional income where Saudi Arabia is known for having a preposterously high amount of oil production. It's a whole thing in and of itself. In fact, if you watch F1, oddly enough, if you look at all the logos, and again, I'm just a, I'm not a big, I'm not a enthusiast, I can't tell you all the stats, but I watch it every once in a while, and oddly enough, I'm more interested in the business side of more, most sports balls and sports events. But nevertheless, if you watch F1, every single corporate logo you see on a car or a banner, last time I watched, it was all tech related. Which makes sense, the tech manufacturer wants to do marketing and they have a lot of money for that. They're all tech related except for two. And this is me just watching one race, so anecdotally, small sample size. 
but there were only two logos that were not tech related. One was Duracell batteries, interestingly enough, and the other one was Saudi Amco. So a big oil company for Saudi Arabia. Now Saudi Arabia has been trying to pivot into other technologies. They, their leadership has tried to make it a tech hub similar to San Francisco. I don't know how much traction has been there, but the country sees long term they want to be known for more than just some of uh, the production of oil. So it makes sense they want to be an industry leader in the EV category. Now, the detriment to Lucid for now is that the current price points is it's a premium luxury brand, which that's how Tesla started as well. But I think the Lucid Sapphire is like 200 grand for a disposable car, which I would never do, obviously. Well, I'd also need 200 grand to help out with that. But nevertheless, I think their entry level vehicle starts closer to around 100. So for now, they're still the premium brand, and maybe that's what Saudi Arabia likes. But it'll be interesting to see if they decide to long-term compete with Tesla by coming out with more economical entry-level vehicle price points. That'll be interesting. Let me know in the comments, do you think this idea makes sense long-term for the company? Or are they just doing it to appease their largest investor? What are your thoughts? I really appreciate what you have to say. Other interesting business news, you have Carl Icahn selling his stake in Xerox back to the company for $542 million. Now, specifically, it looks like Xerox agreed to purchase the price at $15.84 per share, which is the same as, this, as the closing price. And I can't help but think Xerox is probably extremely relieved because he is a very active investor. He really, he, he bought out a bunch of the stock and successfully look at his career track. He's had a lot, of, he's made a lot of good calls. So it's one of those things where I could see why they want to push back because he's not technically an employee. Active investment is a whole fascinating thing in and of itself. But nevertheless, he was very much butting heads with the leadership of Xerox, Xerox throughout the years. Now, he first actually disclosed his stake in Xerox back in 2015, and he was urging the company to explore strategic alternatives and improve operations while seeking board representation. And then several months later, they and Xerox announced they were going to split into two publicly traded companies, separating its service and hardware business, and also guaranteed Carl Icahn three board seats. Now, fast forward even more, in 2018, Icahn and another shareholder by the name of Darwin Dyson protested a merger between Xerox and Fujitsu Holdings Corp, saying the deal undervalued the company. Now, the investors also said that management wasn't qualified to run the company and called for the removal of Xerox then chief executive officer, Jeff Jacobson. The pair sued Xerox, which resulted in the court temporarily blocking the deal before Xerox walked away and Jacobson resigned. Now, one of the more recent events was in 2020. That was when Icon urged Xerox and HP to put together a deal. And yeah, talk about two very different companies, similar categories. And he reported a 4.24% stake before exiting in 2020. HP later rejected several offers from Xerox before a hostile tender was launched, Xerox withdrew its hostile bid in March of 2020, citing turmoil caused by the pandemic. So making lots of waves as an investor, I can't help but what, think most of the Xerox remaining board directors and leaderships are probably probably ex exhaling a little bit since there'll be much less drama, so to say, and much less um, activism from the investors, perhaps, so they can run the company as they see fit. It'll be interesting to see. Maybe Maybe the will crash after this. Maybe they'll. Maybe they didn't make the right calls. Maybe he was right. But when it comes to these long-term calls, time always shall tell. Other interesting business news: You have Epic Games laying off 16% of their staff. Now, it's one of those things where how the mighty have fallen in terms of Epic Games, and it's one of those things where it's been so many years since I played. A video game console that wasn't a cartridge based i had to double check something so in terms of my childhood when i remember epic games really been known for i mean that was gears of war and i believe it's an xbox exclusive one of the few reasons to buy an xbox you had the halo exclusive so you could only buy that if you want to play that game you had one platform to choose from and then gears of war was another very popular console exclusive video game as well and Epic games was the publisher behind that now, more recently, they're remaking that child game called Fortnite, which, if you work in tech, has nothing to do with Fortinet, which is a lost opportunity in and of itself. I don't know how they don't sponsor the events or something like that. I appreciate a good pun of similar spellings, nevertheless. But it looks like laying off 
16% of their staff, that's going to equate to, unfortunately, that's about 870 employees gone. And in terms of, you know, when they asked for feedback, what the CEO was thinking, you have Tim Sweeney, when he announced it in the memo, he, he was saying that the video game had been, quote, spending more money than we earn and as it expands Fortnite into the metaverse inspired ecosystem for creators, it's not working out too well, or quote, quote. He also says quote, that the cost cuts also involve di divesting its independent music platform called Bandcamp to Song Traders Marketplace, as well as spinning off a kid game brand called Super Awesome's ad business, interestingly. And so those things where I'm not too surprised Pretty much every business these days are laying people off. There's a lot of uncertainty in pretty much every industry these days. Although the United Auto Workers still want literally 40% more than what they were previously being paid. A mere cost of 80 to $100 billion added to the cost of labor over the course of four years for the big three. That was the initial argument that they want. Everyone else is suffering, but interesting approach. So I'm not too surprised that they're unfortunately having to go through these layoffs. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Microsoft has to increase their hiring in terms of if they successfully, if they can successfully purchase Activision Blizzard, which most of the UK regulators are now greenlighting in, in terms of the global acquisition and the processes. That seemed to be the last government entity that was putting a pause on the acquisition with the concern of a monopoly. So hopefully if Microsoft goes with it, through with that transaction, they'll ramp up those businesses and instead of having to lay people off, maybe they'll be able to hire some of these folks as they expand and make more and more games. It'll be interesting and it is unfortunate that these folks are losing out in their current roles, but hopefully they'll find new roles soon. Now going over to the culture part of the podcast, you have Elon firing his entire election integrity staff. Is a little, is a little shimmer of hope restored perhaps? Now we're still waiting for the specific details on why he had chosen to do this. Now one of the issues with Twitter, now X, is that it's never really made a profit. And that wasn't really an issue until we had him buying the company. And now there's no, no such thing as free cash anymore in the United States. You're not getting 0% interest rates anymore. Quite the antithesis is the opposite. Interest rates are at all time high. A lot of tech companies were propped up by cheap cash. And they were the old metric for, you know, is Facebook successful? Is all these companies successful? A lot of the metrics for social media apps in particular, it was the number of users. How many active users do you have on the platform? Which also de-incentivizes de things like getting rid of bots, unfortunately. So now more and more companies, they're starting to ask, well, great, you have this many users. When are you going to make a profit? And Twitter never has. And part of the issue, he bought the company trying to think, how can we make a profit? So they started to come out with Twitter Blue, which is an interesting, unique idea. As far as I know, the first major social media company to actually have an idea where you pay for the product instead of you being the product. Now, the attempt was to do this to get away from advertisers because when you bought the company, 50% of ad spend gone. So the advertisers are not spending as much as they used to on the platform. However, not, not, apparently, if I were to guess the logistics and the finances behind it and why they're moving towards advertisers, not enough people actually bought Twitter Blue to make the company financially viable. So they had to go court the advertisers again, unfortunately. Now, in doing so, Elon went out and hired Linda Ma uh, Macarena. Oh, Yakarino. Close enough, some might say. But he hired her, and her whole experience is ad sales and making sure, I believe she came from NBC, also World Economic Forum, apparently. And quite a different perspective. When you're looking at advertisements, more often than not, they don't want controversy. They want censorship. They want only one line of ideological thought to be pushed out. And... If you don't censor it, they will not do business with you, basically. So my guess is that he hired this election integrity team in ahead of the 2024 elections to appease some of those advertisers. Now, unfortunately, as literally anyone with a modicum of intelligence could predict, they immediately became more draconian, shadow banning accounts, hiding countless comments, even something as silly as a GIF or a GIF, as a youth might say, of someone taking beer out of a fridge, even that's been censored. By they they hide it, saying this is a sensitive post. You have to do an extra click to actually see it. And of course, you have major brands like Bud Light that are censoring everything as even remotely controversial with their dying brand, where you actually they hide it completely. You have to press a button if you want to see it. Now, as we gain more perspective and we gain a little bit more insight, 
it will be interesting to see what were the specifics or what was the pivotal moment that caused him to fire these inept draconian people. It's one of those things where he claimed he did it because they in of them they in the um themselves actually were causing election interference, which is hilarious, hilariously ironic, although not too unsurprising. And it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, we'll get back to the point where free speech is still a thing in the United States. Unfortunately, I mean on Twitter, it seems maybe maybe there's a shimmer of hope. Do you? Does this give you any hope that there'll be less censorship? Why do you think he really got rid of these folks? And do you think he needs to get rid of the CEO? Where her whole perspective is to appease advertisers. And inherently, that perspective is one that values advertisers more than free speech. She's literally said that they will have a policy of... say She literally said you have freedom of speech, not freedom of reach. Where you've had instances like the Daily Wire where they'll say something, but... Twitter will actually manipulate the feeds so that no one will see it. So you can tweet it, but no one's going to see it. What's the point? And in some cases, if you tweet it, only the people who follow you tweet it. So they're doing all sorts of shady things again. And perhaps Elon just had enough. He got sick of it. But let me know. Do you think we'll find out the real reason soon of why he got rid of them? And then does this restore any faith you might have in the previous platform? Let me know in the comments. It would be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now, going on to the political part of the podcast, you have Tim Scott, GOP debate highlights from September 27th. Now, as we go here, it looks like he put a couple of these highlights out recently. Now, I'm not saying he gets an F for marketing, but I basically just did a quick search on his Twitter feed. And I basically just took what looked to be the top highlights, which, again, I... Nikki Haley and Vivek were much more, or Vivek, I still think Davek from college, his rapping days, was a more catchy name, but they had very concise highlight reels where it was like a five to seven video, minute video on their feed, and they literally said, here's the top five highlights, which I think gives you great insight to what they're thinking strategically, what they think the American people want, and what do they think their greatest differentiators are from the competition. Now... Unfortunately, Tim Scott was more sporadic, so it looks like there's a couple, couple. So we're gonna take a look at the top three tweets that he has, or posts, if you wanna call it that. I still call it Twitter. Do you call it X these days? But nevertheless. So he says, before his video, he says, quote, I know America can do for anyone what she's done for me. That's why I'm focused on restoring hope, creating opportunities, and protecting the American America we love. God bless America and the United States, unquote. Without further ado. That Joe Biden needs to be fired. That's why I'm running for president. I look forward to being the next president of the United States. I will also say, I know America can do for anyone what she's done for me. It's why we're focusing on restoring hope, creating opportunities, and protecting the America we all love. Growing up in a single parent household, I wondered if the American dream would work for a kid in the inner city. I've got good news for every single child, whether you're in the inner cities of Chicago or the rural parts of Iowa. America and the dream, it is alive, it is well, and it is healthy. God bless these United States of America. There's no doubt that. I gotta love how Twitter still has the issue. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, depending on who you ask, but the video repeats itself immediately after the end, oddly enough. So I think that's a great message. I mean, it's certainly a unique perspective, especially compared to the other people who are trying to become the Republican nominee. And I'm surprised it's not going viral because it is a unique success story against overcoming all odds. But if you look at, you know, what's the look at the comments and the statistics in a couple days, 48 hours specifically, you got 10,400 views, which again, I think, again, a very unique message. I think you should be getting millions of views. Now, in terms of the comments, we're trying to find the ones with the greatest number of likes. Uh, let's see, we have Mark Ludiana saying, quote, empty suit saying nothing meaningful, unquote, getting four likes. Let's see here. Someone by the name of Tom H saying, quote, if everyone is a grifter who is going to pay the bills, unquote, getting three likes. Again, let's see. 
Let's see. There's not a lot of responses to this. Oh, I'll try to find one more. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, there are not. Uh, someone. Uh, this person sounds familiar. I think. I believe they. They. They did a couple comments on uh, DeSantis and Vivek, I believe. A person by the name of V. And she said, quote, shut up, Tim. Let other people speak when it's their turn. Hard pass on you. So interestingly enough, and again, if you get the number of views these responses are getting, I mean, getting 6, 19, 57 is the great, is the one that got the most views. Oh, no, no, no. We got 70. Let's see. Someone by the name of Jim Fuzili said, quote, never forget this, never. And apparently it's a clip. That's a 30-second clip of Tim Scott. And then, let me see here. And I got, well, I only got one like with 70 views. And the caption is, Tim Scott says, Johnson's Great Society was harder to survive in than slavery. So not a lot of likes and not a lot of responses to that particular highlight that he posted. Let's go at the second of the third things that he posted about the debate from Tim Scott. Let's see here. So now we have a little text before his clip. He says, quote, as one America family, our nation continues to go in the right direction. It's why I can say I have been discriminated against, but America is not a racist country. We are the greatest country on God's green earth. The city on the hill needs a new leader and I'm ready, unquote. There is not, there is not a redeeming quality in slavery. He and Kamala should have just taken the one sentence out. America has suffered because of slavery, but we've overcome that. We are the greatest nation on earth because we faced our demons in the mirror and made a decision. So often we think that all the issues, you talk about crime and education and healthcare, we always think that those issues go back to slavery. Here's the challenge though. Black families survived slavery. We survived poll taxes and literacy tests. We survived discrimination being woven into the laws of our country. What was hard to survive was Johnson's Great Society, where they decided to put money, where they decided to take the black father out of the household to get a check in the mail, and you can now measure that in unemployment, in crime, in devastation. If you want to restore hope, you've got to restore the family, restore capitalism, and put Americans back at work together as one American family. Our nation continues to go in the right direction. It's why I can say I have been discriminated against, but America is not a racist country. Never ever doubt who we are. We are the greatest country on God's green earth. And frankly, the city on the hill needs a brand new leader. And I'm asking right. for your vote. I'm gonna so that one. There is not. Come on, Elon. Why do the videos continually just immediately reset? Ridiculous. Nevertheless, that one got a lot more views than the previous post that he had. The previous clip only got about 10,000 views. This one, again, they're posted within minutes of each other. Within 48 hours, this got 67,800 views. Now looking at the comments section, we got a lot more activity. One of the top responses being from a person by the name of, and this is their name, just trying to matter in makeup. All right. So this person says, quote, I too have been discriminated against to gender, finances, outside appearance, skin color, etc. It's a fact of life for everyone. America was the greatest, was once the greatest country. When will you begin deporting? When will you cut off Ukraine? When will you outlaw forced medication and child mutilations? No explanation needed, just dates. And that person got 15 likes out of 654 views. Now, someone responded to that response saying, quote, this is a German Fett. Apparently, the cousin of Boba Fett, perhaps. Now, this person says, quote, he told us last night that he fully supports funding Ukraine. And that person got six likes out of 96 views. Other top comments include someone by the name of Coco Beans 
servant. This person says, quote, I don't trust anyone who would vote for a convicted criminal just saying, unquote. That person got 38 likes out of 747 views. Now, I don't know if he's just... First year... All right, so someone didn't ask him if they were clarifying, like, did, is there something, did, is Tim Scott a criminal? Or who are you talking about? So someone asked him, like, who the hell are you talking about? And Cocoa Beans did clarify, saying, the first GOP, de quote, the first GOP debate, they were asked if they would support Trump as the presidential nominee if he were convicted, and Tom raised his hand. So, unquote. So that's what the reference was. Now, other top responses being, let's see. Dr. William Lester saying, quote, they're still not going to vote for you despite the size of your tap shoes, unquote. What an enlightened doctor, or more accurately, moronic doctor? Hmm. Pejorative comment against Tim, nevertheless. Let's see. Someone, uh, no, I didn't get any likes for that. A lot of people say some Yehweh Joha Jehoiah. This person says, quote, Oh, Uncle Tom, so sorry in advance for your losses, unquote. And they got two likes, which is a pejorative term people use if people of African American descent seem to vote for Republican. They're immediately ostracized and they're pejoratively called Uncle Tom. You, hear, you see this with Candace Owens from The Daily Wire, who's a political commentator. She receives that pejorative, uh, many people consider it a slur, many times. Uh, let's see. Another one uses the same slur or pejorative term, whatever you prefer to refer it to as, Mr. Sir, Sir Oasis of Liver. One of the issues where I'm working on a stutter. I, it's never been tried by the Mayo Clinic or any doctor, but if you click that subscribe button, perhaps that is the cure for the stutter. It might be. It's never been tested before. Let's try it. You never know. Now, a person by the name of Sir Oasis of Liver said, quote, the dude on the box of Uncle Ben's is looking for a new job, unquote. That person got three likes and 52 views. So, pretty pejorative comparing, well, Uncle Ben's no longer on the box. They took that off way back ago. But a pejorative jab at him, nevertheless. Someone by the name of Lucas Ward said, quote, No, Tim, you are not ready. You will never be, unquote. Person got 17 likes out of 278 views. And... I'm trying to find someone just saying POS. Uh, there's a couple of people saying oh, amen. Some people saying rhino, which is Republican in name only. A pejorative term for many Republicans who are secretly Democrats. Uh, yeah, it's... Dude, I... I do, 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 do. Yeah, I'd say... I'd say it seems like 85, 86, it seems a majority of these comments are pejorative. Uh, they're either against him or some of them are just, some are mentioning his policies, but yeah, overall I'd say that tweet was not a win, but nevertheless, maybe third time's a charm. Let's look at the third thing he decided to tweet as a highlight from the GOP debate. Now... This is Tim Scott. Oh, this is only 30 seconds. And he says, before the video, in the little text, he says, quote, We can't have another four years of folks in the White House tied to the Chinese Communist Party, unquote. I'll go one step further, though. When we have a conversation about the things that are happening on this stage, we think about the fact that Vivek just said we were all good people. And I appreciate that because last debate, he said we were all bought and paid for. And I thought about that for a little while and said, you know, I can't imagine how you could say that knowing that you were just in business with the Chinese Communist Party and the same people that funded Hunter Biden, millions of dollars, was a partner this of yours as well. It's not nonsense. So look, do, do not, I'll, 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 I'll go now, it looks like that got 39,000 views on the Twitter within 48 hours. And let's go to the top responses. Some by the name of Crimson News, which, A plus for a profile picture, it looks to be the color crimson. So, it makes sense. That's good marketing. That's A plus. This person says, quote, there is no CCP connection if you actually listen to Vivek Ramaswamy 
Instead of interrupting him, you might learn that he is the only one aside from Trump who advocates for the hardest policy on China. I do not take you. I did not take you for a liar, Tim Scott, unquote. And this person got 38 likes out of 380 views. Now let's see what are the top responses here. Let's see. Mr. Zachary Martin says, quote, wish you wouldn't talk over the other candidates. Makes it seem like you have something to hide, unquote. The person got 19 views out of 174. Or rather, what did Willy Wonka say? Stop. Reverse. The person got 19 likes out of 174 views. Uh, someone Mr. by the name of Mr. Drudith simply said, quote, you are pathetic, unquote. And they got 15 likes out of 166 views. Another top response, Mr. Dean said, quote, you've done more damage in one debate than you did since the campaign began. It's tough when an outsider comes in and takes the votes from a lifelong politician, unquote. That person got 19 likes out of 270 views. Uh, let's see. Uh, several people saying you will never be president, getting four, between four and six uh, likes. Uh, so, do, 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 do. Someone by the name of Mav. This person said, quote, Tim, you are being duped by your super PACs by feeding fake news, or you have changed and now getting slowly corrupt, unquote. They got 12 likes out of 126 views. Interestingly enough, it does look... Uh, let's see. Someone by the name of Peter Jalbikon saying, quote, VR had such a good reply, and it made you try to shut drown him out by talking over him. A win for VR, unquote. VR being a reference to Vivek Ramaswamy. This person got 15 likes out of 128 views. Uh, Daniel Matthews said, quote, Vivek's, Vivek's policy on China is stronger and more detailed than anyone on that stage, unquote. Yeah, 12 likes. So interestingly enough, it looks like an overwhelming majority were ironic. They, they were not in support of Tim Scott. They're actually in support of uh, Vivek. So interesting. Does not look like a positive response from social media. Again, this is just specifically Twitter. And those were the top highlights that he himself put out because he was either proudest of those moments or he thinks those moments are going to resonate most with the American voters. Now, let me know in the comments. Do those three instances of Tim Scott increase your perception of him? Are you more likely to vote for him or less likely and perhaps they had the opposite effect that he hoped? It'll be interesting to see how the polls and how the new and long-term ramifications will be from the debate. Maybe he'll go up in the polls. It'll be interesting to see. As I always say, time shall tell. Other interesting political news, you have Chris Christie GOP debate highlights from September 27th and proudly calling Donald Trump, now Donald Duck. How original, Chris Christie. Interesting. It's one of those things where puns, jabs, insults, you gotta be original or creative. And again, that's it's something that's been said a hundred times. I don't know how effective that particular jab will be. Nevertheless, that's something he is very proud of, apparently. Now, his first clip, this is a little bit of text he has before the actual clip. And again, if you have recommendations for different software suites for real time in production, picture in picture, I'd really appreciate it. I tried a couple, but keep having issues with the camera, working with the other monitor, and being able to show two things at once. So I know that's something people keep asking for, and I'm trying to find new technologies to enable that. So if you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave them in the comments or send me a direct message. And I greatly appreciate it because I want to make sure we make the show better and better over time. Now, without further ado, the text before the video from Chris Christie says, quote, who's to blame for the upcoming shutdown? Everyone who's in Washington, D.C. But let's be honest, Trump, Donald Trump added $7 trillion to the national debt in four years, more than any other president in history. Now he's refusing to show up and debate and answer for it. And perhaps this is one of the few times you are happy you do not have the picture in picture. It is not, it is not very visually appealing. But nevertheless, I shall play the clip. Voters should blame everybody who's in Washington, D.C. They get sent down there to do the job, and they've been failing at doing the job for a very long time. And let's be honest about this with the voters. You know, during the Trump administration, they added $7 trillion. 
seven trillion dollars in national debt and now the biden administration has put another five trillion on and counting they have failed and they're in the spot they're in now because none of them are willing to tell the truth none of them are willing to take on the difficult issues they just want to keep kicking the can down the road and the inflation that nikki spoke about is absolutely right and it's caused by government spending and that's why people all across this country are suffering tonight and yet we don't get any answers because joe biden hides in his basement and won't answer as to why he's raising the debt the way he's done. And Donald Trump he hides behind the walls of his golf clubs and won't show up here to answer questions like all the rest of us are up here to answer. He put seven trillion on the debt. He should be in this room to answer those questions for the people you talk about who are Can suffering. And if the government and if the government closes, and if the government closes, it's the blame, it is to the blame of everyone in Washington, D.C., who has failed to do their job and just plays to the grandstand. Interesting approach, Chris Christie. Voters should blame everybody. Damn you, Twitter. Automatically resets. Come on, Elon. Now, that particular clip got right under 50,000 views, coming in at 49,700 in 48 hours. And some of the top responses coming in at, as we go to the comment section, we have someone by the name of Lady Patriot saying, quote, this is who we are watching. This man has already won the primary, unquote. And it's a giant picture of Donald Trump with a caption that says, Live tonight at 8 p.m., Newsmax. Other popular responses being from David O. Chain saying, quote, Doesn't seem to be hurting him in the polls. You've got a lot of catching up to do, Chris, if you're even serious, unquote. Now, this particular comment got 21 likes out of 500 views. Mr. Y. Regal said, quote, Pence was part of that, too. He can explain the spending increase. Why not ask him? He's standing right there, unquote. That person got 19 likes and astutely did point out, oh, yeah, Mike Pence is, you know, two or three podiums down right there. Other top responses by number of likes coming in at Smith's phone. TM said, quote, thank you, Christy, for pointing out that seven trillion of our debt happening under Trump. Seven trillion effing dollars, unquote. First, got 21 likes out of 300 views. Those seem to be... I was going to say, those seem to be the top ones. So not too many... There's a lot of comments. Uh, I'm trying to find the top ones. There's a lot of comments with no likes. People saying, desperate much, please change parties, great answer, thanks to the gas tax. Um, the, yeah, yeah, I'd say that's about it in terms of responses. So not a whole lot of interaction in the comment section for that particular post. Eh, I'd be interested to see if that, I mean, I don't know if it really resonates with anyone in, ter in terms of that got, so what did that got? That got, what is that, 49,000 views just about. Now the next clip that he put up, this is from Chris Christie's, again, his Twitter, this one got right under 80,000 views, so a little bit more traction. And he says, before the click, he says, quote, in the text, quote, if Mexico had known that Donald Trump would have only built 52 miles of the wall in four years, they probably would have just paid for it, unquote. Without further ado. Look, I'll tell you this, Donald Trump failed on this as well. He said he was gonna build a wall across the whole border. He built 52 miles of wall and said Mexico would pay for it. Guess what? I think if Mexico knew that he was only gonna build 52 miles, they might have paid for the 52 miles. I'll look at that camera and I'll look, I'll tell you this, Donald Trump failed. Yeah, I love what Twitter, why is that a thing where the video just automatically resets? Who wants that? Is that a demand? It's gotta be a bug. Nevertheless, Let's look at the 80,000 people who tuned into that clip. Who were the positives or negatives? Some top response coming from Donald J. Trump parody. This person says, quote, Chris, I built nearly 500 miles. You count a rotten piece of wood on the ground that needed to be rebuilt as a wall. No, unquote. That person got 20 likes. Another person by the name of Summon One said, quote, according to the Borders Patrol, Trump, Trump's built and replaced nearly 500 miles of border wall, unquote, coming in at nine likes. Someone said by the name of I'm not an angel tweeted a picture of Chris Christie hugging down um, or embracing Barack Obama. And that person got 13 likes. Let's see here. 
Mr. Red Virgo Stacy, or Mrs. rather, she got quite a good positive responses to her tweet. She said, quote, he no grammar people. I'm gonna read it as it's written. Again from the beginning, quote, he know they were go they were five hundred miles plus of new wall built. Christie is parroting liberal talking points. Biden shut down the wall, though it's already been paid for, unquote. And first, he got 47 likes out of 633 views. Mr. Hirsch said, quote, you can't even stand straight, unquote. First, he got 25 likes out of 629 views. Let's see here. Two, a lot of two and three views, or views that only got two or three hearts. Uh, Maureen said, quote, you can't even win New Jersey, unquote. That person got 14 likes. So, not... Not the best. A lot of gifts of pigs and like the Walmart pools who buy like t seven bucks little plastic things, and those are getting like two, two to th two to four likes, I'd say. So again, I, not a lot of traction here, not a lot of positive responses. Um, the last response I see that has more than five likes. So you have some by the name of Mary Reed saying, "Quote." Donald Trump is not afraid of you or anyone on the stage. Your numbers are so low, you don't deserve to be on the stage with him, unquote. That person got 13 likes out of 112 views. A lot of people, and then a lot of them are, you know, zero to one likes, saying he should switch parties, make them. One, one literally says, Porky Pig. No, Porky Pig did get, that comment did get two likes, to, to that person's credit. So, interestingly enough, I'd say... Not a swing and a miss. I again, I'm not seeing. Eh, no, 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 no. Uh, here's one positive response. You have Robert Merkel, McCurkle saying, "quote I think you ruined Donald Duck's day." No likes, but the, the comment is there, so it exists. And they actually did do an emoji of a duck, which an emoji an emoji can be placed properly and well. And again, I'm trying to fix that stutter, but you know what could fix it? Perhaps never been tried before. Maybe clicking that subscribe button or commenting or liking. You never know. Let's give it a try. Needless to say, that seems to be... Oh, we'll do one last one. Mr. Vicol, or Mrs. Vicol says, quote, You also left office with an embarrassing 9% approval, unquote. That person got 23 likes. So, I, again, I don't think this is... This doesn't seem to be resonating, at least on social media. Well, but you know what they say. Third time is perhaps a charm. So, again, this is... Again, in terms of marketing... I really wish they had a compilation video where it's like, here's one video, top five highlights of what we think we did the best at during the GOP debate, or the top five things we think will resonate most with voters. I mean, thus far we have Nikki Haley who did that, and Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy. I still think of him as the rapper from high school, though the Vivek just sounds pretty groovy, as the youth might say. Why he's not selling merch with that on it, I'm, that's beyond me. Nevertheless, the third tweet from Chris Christie that I noticed was him saying, quote, I know Donald Trump is watching. You're not here because you're afraid. You keep ducking these things. We're going to start calling you Donald Duck. And thankfully, it's only 25 seconds long. And I want to look at that camera right now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching. OK, and you're not here tonight. Not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Now, that did go viral in terms of the other two clips that we just talked about. They got... Less than 100,000 views. This got half a million views in the same time frame of 48 hours. So this one was by far the most viral. And it's interesting he's comparing Donald Duck to an animal because there are many animals you can compare Chris Christie to, none as eloquent or as thin as a duck. I mean, some people are compared. I would never, I would never compare Chris Christie to a pig, but many of the gifts that I see in the newsfeed are pigs and gifts of large hippopotamuses. Um, a rhino, perhaps more appropriate. Um, looks like Winnie the Pooh, maybe. So, perhaps the pot calling the kettle black? Some might say. Now, let's go to the comments. Let's see, D did he knock it out of his park this, with this statement? Did this really resonate with the prospective voters who might be going for Christie? Let's see. Maybe. First comment, Mr. Maley, or Mrs. Maley, rather, she says, quote, 
I mean, I'm no fan of former President Trump, but I'm against name calling. Sorry. And she got 23 likes. You have someone by the name of someone. Makes sense. They are surely someone to listen to. Someone says, quote, Trump 2024, there is no other choice, unquote. Person got 38 likes. Let's see here. Someone had a tweet, comment saying, meanwhile at Mar-a-Lago, and it's, it's a comic of Donald Duck where he gets up in the middle of bed and then go back, goes back to sleep. That person got 97 likes. Someone by the name of Photogenic Floridan, this person said, quote, LOL, Christy practiced this line all week at Duncan, unquote. That person got 221 likes out of 4,610 views. Quite a lot of likes for that. Although, I kind of disapprove, only because I'm not a fan of the new name. It should be Duncan Donuts. Their marketing exactly thought it would be a brilliant idea to just rename it Duncan, which I see lazy and ridiculous. Nevertheless, let's go to see what other comments there are. Well, eh, is Mr. Frank Lawrence said, quote, beats the hell out of Ron DeSanctimonious. That person, unquote, and that person got 15 likes. Yeah. Uh... I forget the actor who's a doctor in real life who's in the Hangover movie, but there's that gif of him just screaming in a classroom saying gay. That person got 57 likes for that, that gif. Credited to whatevs. Let's see. Mr. Reagan said, quote, he's so proud of this, unquote. That person got 65 likes. And a couple of people just put, oh, let's Mr. Greg Booten, host of America, he literally just sent out a GIF, and the text is cringe. It's Michael Scott cringing. That person got 97 likes. So interestingly, in, uh, another Porky Pig from Warner Brothers, the old cartoons, where he's saying, you know, that's all folks. Although he gets credit, he gets it. he's actually praised for stuttering with the iconic line of that's all folks. Which, I probably butchered it a little bit, but still, nevertheless. That got 24 likes. Mr. Arbitrage Andy said, quote, You unironically thought it would be good to tweet this, unquote. You got 42 likes out of 2,634 views. So again, I'm trying to see... Oh, wow. Now, this the snarky beer. This person says, the text says, When you've... Finally get ready to tell the joke you've been rehearsing all week. And the picture is a screenshot of Chris Christie with his chins looking quite comical. That got 429 likes out of 5,284 views. It's one of those things where I, I'm, I see one or two positive comments. But overall, the... Yeah... It's uh, the outlook for Chris Christie on Twitter is not so good. He's not looking great. Although he's consistent in his political ideology and his, his whole campaign idea. His whole campaign idea is Trump bad. I'm the one who hates him the most. That's, that's, that's Chris Christie. And there is a not insignificant number of Republican voters who will vote for Chris Christie, perhaps because he's so much against Donald Trump. He's been the most vocal about Trump this whole campaign. So it'll be interesting. He'll, for certain, perhaps gather a majority of those particular voters. But the real question is, are there enough of those voters to win? And I don't think there's enough to even get the Republican nominee, yet alone the U.S. presidency. Because again, on average, there again, there are people who hate Trump. And there are people who love Trump. And the people who hate Trump, they're, they're voting Democrat. And Chris Christie is pretending to be a Republican, many would say. And I don't think there's enough of those votes for him to get the Republican nominee. Again, there's a lot of people speculating maybe he's just running to get a cabinet position, but with how much he's attacking Trump, I I don't suspect that is his real goal. Let me know in the comments, do you think this particular political track will be successful? Other, pretty much everyone except Vivek is critiquing Trump, but Chris Christie, if you look at social media, is focused with a laser on Trump. I was astonished to find one or two tweets that weren't about Trump on his timeline, and I had to do some digging. But nevertheless, let me know in the comments. Do you think this will help him, hurt him? Or do you think it'll be about the same? People kind of know what he is doing already. It's not too shocking. He came up with a rudimentary nickname. 
Let me know in the comments. It'll be fascinating to see what you have to say. Other interesting political news. You have GOP debate highlights with Mike Pence. Now, let's see here. This is Mike Pence coming back, attempting to the debates. We'll see how much he is able to increase in the polls. Well, there's so much speculation. He He's one of the lower tiers in terms of he's someone who's not... He's nearly last place when it comes to most polls. There's a lot of speculation he's doing this just to preserve his legacy for his grandkids and to distance himself from Trump and the controversies. There's a lot of speculation on is he really running, but and we'll see. Maybe maybe he'll like the hockey stick trajectory. Maybe you know he's got a little bit of maybe he'll hockey stick somehow, and that does happen every once in a while. But there's a lot of speculation speculation on why he's running. But nevertheless, these are the highlights he deemed the best. Although he didn't have, he wasn't prudent enough from accurately, his social media team wasn't prudent enough to make like a simple highlight reel. So what I did is I just took the top, what I thought were the top most engaged tweets that he released from the September 27th debate. And again, I'm still looking for software for picture in picture. So if you have suggestions, really appreciate it. But for now, we will endure, so to say. So he says before the clip in text, he says, quote, the president of the United States needs to be a champion for the American dream for every American. And it begins with the unborn, unquote. Without further ado. Well, I, I promise you that we're going to continue to build bridges to every community in this country. And I'm incredibly proud of that tax cut and tax reform bill. I worked on Capitol Hill to help get that bill passed into law, the largest tax cut in American history. We saw literally the lowest unemployment ever recorded for Hispanic Americans, the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans, 50 year low for women. So I think the president of the United States needs to be a champion for the American dream for every American. And he's a red bull. It begins with the unborn and the aged and the infirm. And it begins with every ethnic group in this country. And I promise you, if I'm president of the United States, I'll be a champion. I'll be a champion for the American dream for Hispanic Americans and for every American. So help me God. Jesus. And again, the Twitter really fixed that, Elon. It's ridiculous. The video I make repeats itself. He's saying, I think he's saying some things that many people resonate with, and he has some great facts. Lowest unemployment. You should be extremely excited about that. He's the only person on that stage that can say those statistics. He's the only one that can say, hey, I was there. I, we got the lowest unemployment for A, B, and C. He should be enthusiastic beyond all belief. As, in terms of, you look at your competition, and whether you're selling cars or knickknacks or becoming a politician, the things that really separate you, those differentiators, the things that only your product has, only your person, only you have. And yet he doesn't sound excited. And again, I, I don't know if it's an off day for him or, but drink it. This is one of the most important, again, maybe he's not really running. It's just, he's doing it half-assed, some might say, but have a extra can of coffee or something. Like get some energy in your system. This is, and again, he's been here before, but I don't know, a lot of people are saying this, maybe this is his last political activity, but just from the, the tone of his voice, does he sound excited to be there? Now, he should be, again, hammering these facts into the ground. He's the only one on that stage that can say that. And he does not sound very enthused. And in terms of going viral on social media, it, it, not so much. And this is at the, within 48 hours, statistics come in, it got 28,800 views. So not the best. You have DeSantis and, you know, you have Vivek and you know, Nikki Haley, usually between, you know, 50, 60, 70, 120. And they have Chris Christie around 10, 20, 30,000 views. Then he, he did get the half million view with the Donald Duck joke. But let's look at the comments. Let's see what people have to say. Mr. Do, 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 Mr. GR81. This person says, quote, sorry, Mike, we haven't forgotten your lack of action in 2021 and leaving Trump out to dry, unquote. That person got five likes oh what the hell good old advertisements on the twitter sphere let's see wow let's see someone by the name of ben can't be ben bergham okay so it's not the competition though apparently it's a host of a law and order show this person says i agree with you but please go away already hashtag trump 2024 and this hashtag no Judas Pence. I mean, that's a good old biblical reference. I know public schools are, they don't teach books these days, but nevertheless, that religious text is when Judas actually betrayed Jesus. 
that being the metaphor he's using here, he got 36 likes. So that resonated with quite a few folks. And let me see here. This is a GIF, someone by the name of Pound Sand. And this person just did a GIF of, of has to be some sort of celebrity, saying, oh, oh, F off. Now that person got four likes? I, again, I'm not seeing a lot of positive interaction. Not a lot of likes in these comments. Mr. Not Dale JR88 said, quote, your candidacy, not my concern, unquote. That person got three likes. All right, so that, I think the context that he actually said, the statistics were good, but it, uh, it just did not resonate with hardly anyone. Now, his next clip of the three things I thought he was most proud of, this one did get more views, many more. But still not, not, not that much. He got about 64K. So this is a little text before his little speech. And he says, quote, During our administration, we achieved energy independence and became a net exporter of energy for the first time in 75 years. When I'm president of the United States, we're going to open up federal lands, unleash American energy, and retake our spot as the leader producer of energy in the world, unquote. I think one of the signature accomplishments of our administration was in just a few short years. We achieved uh, energy independence. We became a net exporter of energy for the first time in 75 years. But on day one, Joe Biden declared a war on energy, which was no surprise because when Joe Biden ran for president, he said he was going to end fossil fuels. And they've been working overtime to do that ever since. If I'm president of the United States, uh, we're going to open up federal lands. We're going to unleash American energy. We're going to have an all of the above energy strategy. And I have a plan that actually would not only reclaim energy independence, but in, in 2006, America lost our position as the leading energy producer on earth. I believe in the next 10 years with the right policies and an experienced leadership in the White House, we can reclaim our role as the leading energy producer on earth and that'll grow the American economy for generations to come. So again, that he sounded like he had a little more energy. Perhaps he has a, maybe he snuck a drink from Red Bull under the little podium he has, perhaps. Now that got 64,700 views but only 207 people liked it. Um, let's look at the comments. Mr. Quacked Up, this individual said, quote, Sir, you'll never be president, unquote. They got 22 likes. Some by the name of Jamal Jernan said, quote, A little tip for you, Mr. Vice President. You should take credit for the good things you accomplished during your tenure. Instead of saying we were in office, say during my time as vice president, I achieved this and that. I had to navigate carefully with uh, with President Trump to uphold the conservative agenda while he engaged in diplomatic endeavors like the DPRK. Despite the challenges, I delivered results. My loyalty lies in the American people and being smart ones, staying true to one's character. I can continue to work for the benefit of all. That person, while their response was quite lengthy, they did get eight likes. Now scrolling through, let's see here. Mr. Teco Mojo says, quote, Wow, over one hour after this, and I am the 95th person to comment, that says it all, unquote. That person got four likes. Mr. Rob Angelo said, quote, 1% Mike, give up, unquote. That person got 19 likes out of 713 views. Mr. G. S. Sands says, quote, best commentary, best debate commentary of the night, Quote, I'd rather vote for the fly that landed on Pence's head than Pence, unquote. I concur. Person got 15 likes out of 400 views. Will Kenenzi says, quote, if you lose a primary, you can take your comedy road on the road. Or rather, comedy show on the road. Unquote. I first got 17 likes. So again, I'm trying to see... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any positive. Laddie come home said, quote, Mike is pathetic. Got four likes. Grandpa Jason says, quote, we means Trump, unquote. Got seven likes. I guess perhaps a contradictory statement or someone who's, um, 
Oh, no, no, no. They're all consistently against him. Uh, well, that that's that's not great, uh, Mike. That's not great. He did appear to have a little more energy. But maybe, maybe, third time is a charm. Let's see, uh... I'll see his third tweet. Maybe this really embodies what he stands for. And it'll resonate with people. Perhaps? Now, this one was the most viral. This one almost got half a million views. While the other one's got like 20 to 60. So, much more viral. Now, is it much more effective? Let's dive in. He says before the clip, quote, I am sick and tired of these mass shootings happening in the United States of America. And when I'm president, I'm going to go to Congress and we're going to pass a federal ex expedited death penalty for anyone involved in mass shooting so that they will meet their fate in months, not years, unquote. And without too much further ado, play the clip. Well, first let me speak to the mass shootings issue and then I'll answer that question. It's an important one, Dana. Look, I'm someone that believes that justice delayed is justice denied. And as a father of three, as a grandfather of three beautiful little girls, I'm just, I am sick and tired of these mass shootings happening in the United States of America. And if I'm president of the United States, I'm going to go to the Congress of the United States and we're going to pass a federal expedited death penalty for anyone involved in a mass shooting so that they will meet their fate in months, not years. It is unconscionable that the, the, uh, the Parkland shooter, Ron, is actually going to spend the rest of his life behind bars in Florida. That's not justice. We have to mete out justice and send a message to these would-be killers that you are not going to live out your days behind bars. You're going to meet that. justice in this system. But does that mean Interesting. That would also cut the population of Chicago in about in half. Because depending on how you define a mass shooting, depending on what statistic you're looking at, that includes shootings of two or more people. So, an interesting perspective. Now, the downside, I think, I think this is a very big topic, of course. I think a multi-pronged approach would be more prudent. I'm surprised, why doesn't he mention, hey, we have a lot of military vets. You know what would stop a lot of these perpetrators? Put, put a Marine with an M16 in front of every school. Deterrence is a great thing. It's worked phenomenally for the Jewish school community. And you have many examples where bad guys will see the armed guard there and they go away from that particular place. Now, that got 432,000 views. So that's the biggest, most viral moment Mike Pence had on his little Twitter highlights. And let's see what the comments section says. Yay or nay? Now, one of the first comments says, from Southern Girl 954 this person says, quote, or maybe just ban assault weapons since it's what is used in these mass shootings, unquote. Mentally vacuous and inaccurate, correct. But she did get 163 likes. People forget Columbine was, I believe, what was that? There are a couple of them where there's handguns only. But again, you're not, attempt you're not attempting to solve the problem. You're looking at the inanimate object. Now, let's see. Mr. Raul Sood said, quote, death penalty, many of the mass shooters end up killing themselves, unquote. This person got 245 likes out of 8,956 views. Let's see here. Mr. John Crayer said, quote, only issue I see with that is most of these doing them are suicidal, so that might play into their mission. We need mental health to step up so all high school kids and probably junior high get consulted by a trained psychiatrist at least twice a year or more if the consultant deems, unquote. That person's got 39 likes. Mr. Evolution, this person says, quote, why not tackle the root problems, unquote. That person's got 77 likes, which, yeah, that would be the most prudent thing to do. It's, it's one of those things where I don't think it's just politically attractive to say, hey, you know what we really need in the United States? Nuclear families. We need stronger communities, stronger religious communities as well. That's not as attractive as a cliche politician saying we need to do one or two simple keyword things. Where you usually have Democrats say, we need to get rid of guns. And in this case, he says, well, this one is actually not a terrible idea. He needs to define it, though. And again, I think another thing would be good, stop glorifying these evil perpetrators. 
very you see a very similar thing with the sports balls phenomenon where people would run naked out the fields they would do it because they would get famous the uh, the reporters everyone would say their name they all then adopted a policy where they were not going to address their names anymore as well as increasing security those two things help drop that phenomenon to basically really doesn't happen anymore but nevertheless back to the comments some by name of tom the baptist said quote real christian mike unquote person got 93 likes uh, let's see. Again, I'm not, I'm not seeing a lot of them that are positive towards him necessarily. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say needless to say, Mike Pence is not trending. Now, let me know. Do you think these past couple tweets, do they increase your perception of Mike, or do they increase your odds of voting for him? Maybe it decreased it. It, in terms of the comments, and again. It'll be, it'll be fascinating to see what's the correlation between social media. And again, this is just one social media avenue versus actual polls and actual voting. We'll be interested to see if there's any correlation or what that correlation might be. But as of right now, that certainly didn't go viral, I think, the way he wanted to. And again, for a majority of it, it just kind of seemed he sounded lackluster. Like he was, he was just kind of going through the motions. He wasn't really excited or really enthusiastic. But that's just my three cents. It used to be two cents, but now it's three. Oh. Oh, come on, that. There you go. Good old focus. Other political news, you have Doug Burgum. GOP debate highlights from September 27th. Now, unfortunately, he didn't do the convenient thing and actually make a clip that, you know, here's a clip of five of the top highlights. So I went through his news feed, or rather his Twitter feed, and tried to pick the ones that seem the most interesting to folks and the ones that he was most proud of. So this is the first one, and it says, quote, Punishing law-abiding gun owners with more gun laws doesn't solve the crime problem. We know it doesn't. We have to get back to looking at mental health and actually enforcing the law in cities where crimes are out of control, unquote. Now, without further ado... Let's understand is I think that the liberal left is seems to be just completely bent on prosecuting law-abiding citizens that are gun owners because every solution they have to this is take away the Second Amendment rights of Americans and somehow that's going to solve the problem. But all these cities was, that we're talking about that showed the videos of tonight, they have some of the strictest gun laws in the country. So we know that that's not what's working. But what we have to do is get back to the core issues about the, the family. We have to get back to behavioral health and mental health. We've got to get get back to actually enforcing the laws these people talked about first we need to know it's under great points uh, unfortunately did not go viral but yes he is a absolutely on point in terms of accuracy if i was on the republican candidate if i was on that stage highlight the city of chicago in nauseam all the laws that many of the democratic candidates are or politicians are wanting to push on a national federal level they already exist in the city of chicago in dupage county or is it Cook County? Potato, potato, or rudimentary football team, or rudimentary other sporting ball team? Nevertheless, they'll be good next year, the Bulls or the Bears. I'm sure they will. That's what they always say. But nevertheless, the gun laws, they're already passed in Chicago. The ones that they want on a federal level, they're, Chicago has them. Same with their economic laws, their political laws, all, everything they want is already in Chicago. They've governed Chicago for 90 plus years in terms of democratic governance. So I would highlight that in nauseam and say, hey, we have a real life use case of everything they want to do. It's already being done and it's not working. It's just hurting honest law abiding citizens, which is why so many people move out of Chicago. So many businesses move out of Chicago. But nevertheless, let's see what did the comments section think. And unfortunately for him, it didn't really go viral at all. It got 4,021 views. So I think he had a good message, but it's not really getting out there on social media. Again, he did get on the stage. At, so that's an accomplishment in and of itself. And for the first time in, shoot, what, 18 years, we're talking about North Dakota. So that's something. He's from North Dakota. We just learned something today. But nevertheless, let's look at the comments to see, is it resonating? And again, that's 4,021 views in 48 hours. Let's see. Mr. Pax, Canadian advocate, said, quote, note about basic every western county with better control it actually doesn't prevent mass shootings unquote very true the person got six likes i almost 
can't believe this is his real political profile. I mean, you have Colors of the Wind, another comment saying, quote, Why do so many of those law-abiding citizens oppose background checks? I had a background check as painless. Why are they scared? Unquote. Ill-informed and mentally vacuous tweet, but the person did get two likes. I suspect this person is mixing up the definitions. They're thinking of universal background checks, which would be nothing more than a government de facto gun registration. And if you know history, I know public schools don't teach anymore in terms of, you know, history scores all-time low, mathematics, science scores all-time low. But history shows us nothing good happens when the government tries to take guns. Look at literally any history story it ends in the worst most morally depraved things that humanity has ever done it always happens when the government disarms citizens i tell you more comments but that looks like that's it so this person got two comments not to brag but on twitter i got three comments once at n-i-c-t-o-p-p-i-n-g but nevertheless we shall see if his next tweet went a little bit more viral, perhaps. So tweet two of three. Let's see what we got here today. Now we've been talking about issues about. God, I love tw- multi. Come on, Elon, multi trillion dollar company. You got the videos. I don't know. I feel like it just feels cumbersome compared to other video platforms. They re the video automatically restarts. It may have a lot of work to do. Needless to say, but. Doug Burham, he has his little font, or rather he has his text before the video. He says, quote, treat the taxpayer like a customer, unquote. And without further ado, he says... Because all night long we've been talking about issues about how it's broken in Washington, and I respect all of the people on the stage here for their 100 plus years of public service. Thank you. But the reason why we're not talking about education or health care or safety being a problem in North Dakota is because we have a business leader I've got more experience as a business leader than I think this whole group combined. I know I've created more jobs than everybody else on stage, thousands of high-paying jobs that have real meaning. So as a business leader, you come in and you treat the taxpayer like a customer. Because all night long, we've been talking about issues about how it's broken. Again, Elon, what's the benefit of the video automatically resetting is beyond me. But nevertheless, that's a great message. And again, I think he, he needs to get the message out there more, more effectively, but... Not, not enough people know he's an entrepreneur or actually created jobs, which most politicians can't, I'm trying to think, most of them create nothing but more national debt. Now, that video did get more, actually twice as many views as the previous subsequent video we talked about. This got 11,700 views within 48 hours. Now, some of the top responses, Mr. Doug Butcher says, quote, agree, unquote. That person got one like. Jody Vetter said, quote, must be doing something right. Dana threatened to cut your mic while they let everyone else sling insults and interrupt, unquote. And she got four likes. Mr. Dan Stillwell gave a comment. He said, quote, you should have been asked more questions, unquote. And this person got 23 likes. B for the USA says, quote, I think you were the winner tonight, unquote, getting nine likes. Michelle Johnson saying, quote, no, we are your boss. We pay your salary, unquote, five likes. Mr. Common Sense Politics says, quote, they rigged the debate against you, unquote, getting six likes. Mr. David Lee Rothschild said, quote, you did a great job tonight. Thank you, unquote, getting nine likes. And these are getting between 50 and 200 views. Uh, Let's see. Steve Hartel said, quote, I like what you keep saying. I hope you find ways to get your policies out, unquote. And this person got 10 likes at 158 views. Uh, so it looks like the other one said Sharon Pano said, quote, it's terrible how they didn't ask you enough questions and how they threatened to cut your mic. We would like to hear everyone, unquote. And Versus got 11 likes out of 137 views. So, I mean, incredibly, eh, let's see here. I guess there's one meme uh, that says, I, great guy, but I can't unsee the Sam the Eagle, unquote. And that's, I guess it's the Muppet. And that person got one like. Yeah, so it looks overwhelmingly positive responses, but the issue is you need quantity in terms of you know getting the votes out. So a lot of people are bringing up the fact that they cut his mic up. They don't feel, feel like he got enough questions asked for him or he got enough time. And I think partially is because he's lower in the polls than everyone else. And that's you kind of see this with politics, the people who get highest in the polls get the most questions asked. And 
yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, overwhelming support. So that one was pretty good. So I was going to say one out of two in terms of his tweets doing good. Well, what will the deal breaker be for tweet three of three? Pulled up right now. And this one, his text before, and again, it looks like went down a little bit in terms of views. Previous one got 11,000 views. It's got 9,166 total views on the Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it these days. And his text before the video is, quote, Joe Biden's energy policies are the real existential threat to America's future, unquote. And without further ado. Of course, we're going to give Ukraine to Russia, and then we're going to give Taiwan to China and think that's a foreign policy. That will make our nation less less successful, make us more poor. And at the core of all that is energy policy because China imports 10 million barrels of oil a day. They're the largest import in the world. And we've had four cabinet members from the Biden administration there this summer, and none of them talked about U.S. energy. The first one to go to each of those countries was Kerry to talk about the folly of the climate climate policy, which is making the world less stable. It's empowering dictators. It's not about climate change that we need worried about. It's about the Biden climate policies that are actually the existential threat to America's future. Now, it's fascinating how many people forgot the last election cycle where Biden did probably say he was going to shut down the oil industry and go after them like never before. Americans have a very short-term memory. So I think what he, hit, what he said was right. I mean, again, everyone's talking about energy. Related to the consumer, I mean, most people, they really don't care about when you talk about dollars per gal, dollars per um, barrel, rather. Just ask people, look at the gas pump when you're filling up your vehicle. When was the last time it was a buck ninety-five? That's when we were energy independent. Is your family hurt paying three, four, five dollars a gallon of gas these days? I mean, again, bring it back to the consumer, bring it back to the voter and say how it's affecting their weekly paycheck, how it's affecting their weekly budget. I think that would have been a much more prudent way of him of framing this. He, it's almost as if he, he made a good point, but he needed to finish it out saying, you know, what he said is good. And then say, just add on like, wouldn't you love to get, you know, gas for a buck fifty, a dollar fifty a gallon? Wouldn't that help your family's weekly budget? Do you remember those days? Food was actually cheaper because you used diesel trucks basically pretty much for every logistical company to get the food and the products everywhere. There are many benefits to being energy independent. I think they need to highlight the, the ripple effect highlight the ripples that most affect the consumer where they really feel it in their wallet. Now that's my three cents. Used to be two cents, but 40 year hyperinflation got to be three. Should be four cents by a generous man though. Still free to click the subscribe button. Now going over to the comments to see what, what are people thinking? Now, Mr. A dad, great profile name. Now this person says, quote, great job at both debates. You have great ideas and experience. I don't think you are nearly enough time when they throw you in a question. It's like they're just throwing you a bone to placate your appearance. Keep trucking those actually listening to what you say like it, unquote. Now, this person got two likes out of 49 views. Someone right under him, more pejoratively, Mr. Gepetto San Martin said, quote, this uh, doesn't mean anything, unquote. This person got one like. Don't panic. Don't tell me I live my life. Nevertheless, this person's name is Don't Panic. They said, quote, Am I crazy? I thought you should be out as an independent, but I think you won this debate considering your time. Excellent job, unquote. And the person got four likes. So it looks like uh, Mr. Brew Pub Politics said, quote, You got my attention, unquote. Person getting three likes. The Hall said, quote, The debate was deba- disaster, but you stood out as the sane one up there, unquote. Person getting two likes as well. I was going to say, I'm looking and mm, let's see here. It looks like overwhelmingly positive feedback in terms of this tweet. But again, it's also one of those issues where there's only, what is this? There's only 17 comments on it. And, and again, you do need that massive volume of prospective voters to be tuning in. And it'll be interesting to see. Does this change your opinion of Doug? I mean, I think a lot many people who are tuning in to his social media are saying they really appreciate what he stands for, the things he's saying. But the issue is, I, th- I believe he's still in last place or darn near in terms of polls uh, for the preliminary to see who would become the Republican nominee. And I think a lot of people 
or a lot of people just aren't going to support him because he doesn't have the initial base of supporters, perhaps. So it'll be interesting to see. Let me know in the comments. Do you think did this increase your perception of Doug? Did it, we are you more likely to vote for him? A little bit less likely, or is your perception of Doug kind of about the same? He kind of middle of the road, or it'll be interesting to see how this helps or perhaps even hinders him in the upcoming polls throughout the past, next couple of weeks. But I would love to hear what you have to say, but I would say, you know me, time shall tell. Other interesting political news, you have the United Auto Workers President September 29th live stream, but without censorship and with my charming personality. Now this is giving updates on the ongoing strikes between the big three, the big three being General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis, which used to be Chrysler, which owned Dodge and Jeep, but during 2009, their bankruptcy, they were bought out by a European company by the name of Fiat. And last year, they had major companies coming together to form Stellantis. They own everything from Alfa Romeo, I believe Maserati, Fiat, Chrysler, a very big company. And they originally asked for 80 to $100 billion for the next contract in benefits and, co and base salaries and cost in terms of you know fiscal cash, healthcare benefits, pensions. They want to only work 32 hours a week, but get paid 40. They wanted a 40% increase of wages. They wanted pensions, retiree benefits, cost of living adjustments on top of the big cash increase. Now that was their initial offer to the big three. And of course, none of them acquiesced to that because that would quite literally put them bankrupt. Two of the big three, their, their profits were less than the 20 plus billion dollars per year this contract would put them in. Because again, this contract is 80 to 100 billion dollars in value, but it's over the course of the four year contract. Now it looks like they even have the support of a rapper by the name of Jimmy Ram, the OG. Although I think this video will get pulled if I actually play the music, unfortunately. So unfortunately we will not get to hear what surely would be a pinnacle of just intellect and support. Nevertheless, looks like the video is almost there. You gotta love when there's a live stream, but half the video is just their logo waiting for it to start. Which, don't get me wrong, from a marketing department, their graphical design is quite impressive. I, it's a little, nice little interactive UAW logo coming in and out. It is pretty cool, I can give credit. But without too much further ado, and again, it's one of those things where I really appreciate the comments and the feedbacks, trying to make the show better and better every day. I'm trying and searching for new software technology, currently recording using OBS, open source software. Link for a tech and a feature that'll let me do picture in picture production. So that way I can actually show you these videos in real time. And I've tried a couple of the solutions thus far. And unfortunately, it's one of those issues where the camera is not working on those because being the drivers to the new uh, is the Razer um, Kaizen 4K USB camera. I don't know if the drivers just aren't out yet, although it should be. It's been about you know, six months since they released the product. But so the issues, if you have suggestions, I'd greatly appreciate the feedback and I'll try out some software. I'd love to find a solution that works best to improve the show for everyone as we work together to make the show better and better. Now, without further ado, you'll be able to hear the president of the UW, Sean Fain, in his office, which he does have some cool posters. He did get some camera tripods or little poles to put them on. The posters say, UAW saving the American dream, which is kind of hilariously ironic because UAW elects politicians that increase taxes exponentially as well as eliminates the products they're trying to sell. But nevertheless, another one says stand up, COLA, which is cost of living adjustment and fair pay now. Another one says record profits, record contracts. Actually, they got lazy. Two of the posters are the same, they're duplicates. Nevertheless, those are a little of the scenery. And of course, all true men, he did not. He did not suit up as ultra men always do. He acquiesced to a polo. Now, to his credit, there is a UAW embroidery on the left chest, so they got money to spend on embroidery. That's pretty fancy. Most of them are just simple, you know, ink. But nevertheless, without further ado. Good morning, UAW family. I apologize for being late, but mere moments before our Facebook Live this morning, we received a flurry of interest from the companies in addressing some significant bargaining issues. As you know, this morning we will be announcing the next targets for our stand-up strike as we fight for a historic victory at the Big Three. 
But first, as always, I want to take a moment to honor our members who are already on strike. Together, we're putting the fight back in the UAW and in the entire labor movement. A union that's not prepared to strike to win is like a fighter with one hand tied behind his back. Without the strike weapon, the war on workers is a rigged fight. For decades, it's been the same story. Unchecked corporate power. Disappearing worker power. The result is massive inequality across our society. To restore the balance of power, we have to restore the strike. That's what every one of our striking members is doing. Our local 2326 strikers at West Rock Packaging in Dayton, New Jersey are standing strong for the affordable health care that every person should have a right to. Our local 644 members at Dometic outside Philadelphia are standing up to a global corporation that makes billions in profits but won't pay every worker a living wage. Our strikers at Fomber in Newton, Iowa... That, that's one of the most cliche political tools is to use fancy words to cloud your actual intentions. You see this with things like the Patriot Act, which the Patriot Act sounds so patriotic and good, but it destroyed every semblance people had of privacy. Now, they say, what was his exact term there? A fair wage or a livable wage? Every person should have a right to. Our local 644 members at Dometic outside Philadelphia are standing up to a global corporation mm -hmm. that makes billions in profits, but won't pay every worker a living wage. A living wage. Now, keep in mind... Before the strike, they were the highest paid in the automotive community, especially General Motors. They're the one with the biggest cost, which subsequently I think that's why that'll be the last one to stop the strike. They're currently striking against everyone, Ford, General Motors, as well as Stellantis. And GM, they're the one, they're already paying them most of the competition. Toyota, I mean, Toyota, Honda, and Tesla, they're just grinning ear to ear because this is going to give them an even greater competitive advantage over the UAW. He's making more expensive products that are, on average, less reliable. But nevertheless, uh, that is a fancy term that everyone wants to gravitate towards. Though, people don't re do the research and say, oh, wait a minute, you already paid the most? Most companies these days are laying people off, but you got 40% plus? Uh, nevertheless, well, let's see what else he has to say. Our strikers at Fombert in Newton, Iowa, at Local 997, are fighting for work-life balance that every worker deserves. Here in Michigan, our members of Blue Cross Blue Shield are striking to stop the outsourcing that puts CEO pay before patient care. Let's remember that our movement is fighting everywhere, not just in Michigan, but from east to west and from north to south. Our members at ZF in Tuscaloosa, Alabama make axles for Mercedes when they're on the job. Today, they're on strike. They're teaching Mercedes the same lesson we're teaching the big three. Not a single wheel will turn without us. <laughs> Until they automate your jobs or hire more competitive wages? Yeah, we'll see about that. And that's what's happening across the vehicle supply chain. Members of UAW Local 259 at an Infinity dealership in Long Island, New York, faced down the boss and won a new agreement. They called a strike in the morning, and by the afternoon, management caved. Now they have a new agreement with serious gains and no concessions. Our members at Mack Truck may also be hitting the picket lines when their agreement expires at midnight on Sunday. Sadly, Mack Truck is following the same tired playbook as so many of our other employers. They're dragging out bargaining till the very last minute. The company took three weeks to respond to our economic demands, and then they put a long list of concessions on the table. Our members at MAC voted by 98% to authorize a strike. So unless the company gets serious, they're about to learn firsthand that our union's back in a fight, and we're not backing down to anybody. And just down the road from Solidarity House, UAW members at Detroit's MGM Grand Detroit Motor City Casino and Hollywood at Greektown are taking a strike authorization vote as we speak. 
They're part of the Detroit Casino Council, a group of five unions working together for a fair contract. Working the casinos, perhaps the best metaphor for the union, I'm not going to lie. That is, there's a lot of historic, uh, a, lot of metaf a lot of metaphors there. But did he just say the MGM that suffered one of the biggest cybersecurity attacks ever? Interesting. Following COVID shutdowns and with throughout Detroit casino workers that faced all kinds of sacrifices. They sacrificed raises. They shouldered heavier workloads so the industry could recover. And now workers are struggling to make ends meet even as the industry generates all-time record high gaming revenues. As you know... Now, uh, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. Now, there's a big difference between revenue and profit. He just said all-time revenues. You can make a million dollars in revenue, but if you're making 1% profit, you're not going to be eating very well. So, interesting, he points out the revenues. We have over 18,000 Big 3 members on strike at 41 facilities in 21 states. That includes over 5,000 workers striking at parts distribution centers and CCAs at Stellantis and GM from California to Massachusetts. These facilities represent a key revenue stream for the Big 3 and for years have represented a lower paid tier of workers. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge something very disturbing we've seen on a few picket lines at parts depots. We've heard of multiple instances from California to Michigan to Massachusetts of violence against our picketers from people crossing our picket line. We've had guns pulled on us, trucks and cars rammed through us, and violent threats hurled at us. And I want to be absolutely clear, we will not be intimidated into backing down by the companies or their scabs. Our cause is just pejorative to call them scabs. There's no need for name calling. We now call them band-aids because they fix problems. Although perhaps a more would be a more apt metaphor for something that could fix a problem long term. Band-aids band certainly are great for temporary heels. It's a good long term fix for something. Maybe call them surgeons, perhaps. Let me know in the comments. That's a good suggestion for that. Striking for a better future to protect our communities and to defeat corporate greed is not just our right, it's our... Corporate greed is wanting to make a profit. His original offer for it was for them to go bankrupt. Because again, they were asking between 80 and 100 billion dollars in benefits and wages. And last time I checked, only one of the companies made over that cost. So their profit would be, one of the big three would make like a million, maybe a half a billion dollar profit. The rest would go out of business again, as they did earlier in 2009, in part because of the high inflated UAW cost. Duty and shame on anyone that would engage in this violence against our members. Which, that's not a prudent thing to do. Violence, historically speaking, never gains you support. And it's also morally abhorrent in most cases. So it's disgusting that people are taking violence on these folks as well. So people... People always say, am I against unions or is there anything we, I disagree, you know, anything we agree on? Well, I think there's a little common ground right there. I don't think anyone thinks that violence is appropriate or a good call to action. If you look at most historic movements, most success comes from nonviolent, peaceful protest. Which is what I, I always urge as well. To the public, we invite you to stand with us on the picket line if you support our cause. As you know in our- Ooh, will he pay me $500 per week? That's currently how much they're making. $500 per week. To stand with a sign. I wish I was making that much for that level of effort. That's pretty darn good. Reunion, we were red on Wednesdays. This is a tradition begun by our union family in the CWA to honor a striking member who was killed on the picket line in 1989. In our own union, during our 2019 strike at General Motors, one of our union brothers was killed on the picket line. Company and scab violence is not new. Our union's been fighting- Again, with the hurtful name calling rhetoric, they're called Band-Aids now, Sean. For nearly a century. We didn't back down then, and we won't back down now. 
and we know America has our back. This week we were joined on the picket line by none other than the President of the United States. It was a historic day. We picketed at GM's Willow Run facility where UAW members built the B-24 Liberator bombers during World War II. Brilliant marketing in terms of Sean. Actually, while I might not agree with the context or really much of what he's saying, in terms of marketing and politics, that is a brilliant move. Again, you have to think about who does the UAW unanimously vote for? Democrats. When Biden went to the rally, they were exuberant. They were very happy. And they're attributing Sean to that. He's the president of the UAW. So from a move on the political chessboard, that was a good move. He used the emotional rhetoric of the presidency. He used the emotional rhetoric of wartime production. Very good marketing, I would say. Good politicking, Mr. Politician. If that is a verb. If it isn't, we're getting a little bit of Shakespeare up in here. We're going to create our own words, perhaps. Our union was essential in building what was called the arsenal of democracy. Just like 80 years ago, today, our union is building a different arsenal of democracy. But this war isn't against some foreign country. The front lines are right here at home. It's the war of the working class versus corporate greed. We are the new arsenal of democracy. The workers are the liberators, and our strike is the vehicle for liberation. I want to be clear about one thing about the president's historic visit. The most powerful man in the world showed up for one reason only. Because our solidarity is the most powerful force in the world. When we stand together, united in the cause of economic and social justice, there's nothing we can't do. Again, very smart politician using a simple cliche word called social justice because he knows Given the demographics and the political agencies of the UAW, that's a very hot topic, very attractive word for them. Also, if he's trying to appeal to most Americans in the middle of a lot of folks in the United States, as that word is a very political word, that's going to resonate with them as well. Do. With that said, let's talk about bargaining at the big three. UAW family, I'm going to be very direct with you. Over the last week, the vice presidents and your national negotiators in my office have been working night and day to bargain a record contract that reflects the record profits we have produced for the big three. Sadly, despite our willingness to bargain, Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress at the table. Is it because it would bankrupt them, perhaps? That's why at noon Eastern time today, we will expand our strike to these two companies. Ooh. To be clear... That's what Ford gets, almost as if they're spitting in their eye. Ford was the one who foolishly actually helped create the UAW in terms of the first endorsement, or acquiescing to them. But Ford, historically, has more UAW workers than the others. Ford has, I believe, when I reported on the executive salaries, talking about the breakdowns, Ford employs about 50... Again, these are off the top of my head, about 57,000 UAW members. Whereas General Motors and Stellantis are more in the 40s, uh, high 40s for GM, low 40s for Stellantis. So Ford is the one who is paying you a lot. I know GM has the highest, most inflated salaries or wages, perhaps. And yeah, Ford, they, they gave Ford a, a brief pause, but now they're going to screw, oh, we got, turn the knife in, so to say. Negotiations haven't broke down. We're still talking with all three companies. Negotiations have broke. They haven't broken down, but we want to turn that knife. Which, again, that's his job. He's the he is the uh, president of UAW. I believe he makes about a quarter million a year. Divorce attorneys do great when they create conflict. Needless to say. And I'm still very hopeful that we can reach a deal that reflects the incredible sacrifices and contributions our members have made over the last decade. I suspect not. He keeps highlighting how this was a historic event. He was elected by the UAW members because they want to strike. I, this is going to take, again, maybe I'll be wrong, maybe this will be solved magically within a, a day or two. But I, I don't think it's, because again, this is a pivotal moment for all the big three. They are trying to compete with Tesla. I don't think that's a prudent business idea, but 
they're going to go all in on EVs. So they're going to need to hire a lot more folks who are tech savvy as they basically become a tech company. Now, GM, they've been making sacrifices. Mary Barra, they bought out about 5,000 employees from their salaries and they eliminated positions after that. that I believe it was February in 2023. So on the corporate side, they're making cuts, trying to get the cost down because they're trying to compete with Tesla. And yet the UAW, they're trying, to, they're trying to cut at the corporate and then the UAW wants to inflate the cost dramatically. Again, I don't see how they're going to come together or how it'll be a long-term profitable endeavor. But I also know that what we win at the bargaining table depends on the power we build on the job. It's time to use that power. That's why I'm calling on an additional 7,000 members across Ford and GM to go on strike starting at noon Eastern today. I'm calling on Ford's Chicago assembly plant to stand up and go on strike. And I'm calling on GM's Lansing Delta Township to stand up and go out on strike. And let me be clear, and this is important, Lansing Regional Stamping will continue working. Our courageous members at these two plants are the next wave of reinforcements in our fight for record contracts. We are not calling on any additional members at Stellantis to go on strike. Moments before this broadcast, Stellantis made significant progress on the 2009 cost of living allowance, the right not to cross a picket line, as well as the right to strike over product commitments and plant closures and outsourcing moratoriums. We are excited about this momentum at Stellantis and hope it continues. Until then, we will keep building our arsenal of democracy and we will win. Our strategy is working. As the President of the United States recently put it, UAW members saved the automobile industry back in 2008. <laughs> when we made a lot of What? They, they, they were a contributing factor to the bankruptcy. If you look at any financial analyst or just look at the long-term benefits that were being paid out. I mean, it was so bad, Ford barely survived. They took out a loan at a very opportune time. GM went bankrupt for, I believe, the third time now. And then Chrysler went bankrupt so bad they got bought by a European company. So, yeah, they had to do cuts, but it was after the fact. They didn't, I wouldn't call that saving the companies. They went bankrupt. And GM sells long-term debt that people keep forgetting to talk about when they talk about, oh, yeah, GM, GM made this was profit. Well, yes, they need to pay that back, too. Not, so, nevertheless, we'll get back to what uh, Sean is saying here. A lot of sacrifices. We gave up a lot, and the companies were in trouble. But now they're doing incredibly well, and guess what? We should be doing incredibly well, too. Over the last 10 you, years... You're already paid the most in the industry, but okay, well, let's see what else you have to say. Years, the big three have made a quarter of a trillion dollars in North American profits. Yes, and then they reinvest them back into the company. That's how a business works. Okay. Over the last six months, the big three have made a record 21 billion in North American profits. We knew going into this, the fight, into this fight that the road ahead was going to be difficult. And we knew that it was unlikely this would be quick. To quote the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the arc of moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. UAW family, you are the force that bends that arc. Our anger is righteous and our struggle is just. We are fed up with corporate greed and we are fed up with corporate excess. We are fed up with breaking our bodies for companies that take more and more and give less and less. But they pay more and more, especially compared to the competition? As of noon Eastern time today, 25,000 of us will be on strike for a better future. To all our community and political allies, we invite you to join our picket lines. To our UAW families still working on the job, keep monitoring for the status quo violations and keep refusing voluntary overtime. And keep showing the companies that you're ready to stand up when you're called. When we win this fight, when we right the wrongs of the past 15 years and longer, and when we set a new course for future generations, it won't be because of any president. 
not the UAW president, not the president of the United States. It will be because ordinary people did extraordinary things. Our solidarity is our strength. Good and right now, our Good strength is the hope, hope of working class people everywhere. Let's stand up and win this thing for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our country, and for our future. Thank you. That is quite a nice graphic that they put in at the end. Good animation, too. So, not too surprised to hear the strike is getting worse. They're going to expand it. Now, interestingly enough, of course, my comment section are always open because I believe in censorship and I'm an American, but they acquiesced and actually shut down all the comments for these. I can't even tell you how many people liked the video because they got rid of the like counter because they chose to. Interesting that they keep choosing those decisions. It looks like some of their videos, oddly enough, have them open randomly, it seems, but not for these types of interviews and usually not with Sean. But now, it looks like they did have a live stream and I would say, again, it looks like they're mostly UAW employees. And again, in terms of doing what the, the members want, I think Sean is doing what they want. It's one of those instances where his job is to be a politician is to create conflict between the two parties, the big three being Ford, GM, Chrysler, and all the factory workers. The more conflict that is created, the more value he appears to create. Like a divorce attorney or a divorce lawyer. Equally as moral, equally as, moral as well. Now, it'll be interesting to see because, again, they already have the highest wages in the industry. Tesla, Honda, and Toyota are going to be the big winners from this scenario, I suspect. Because, again, right now, they're shutting down the factories. So what? Right now with the economy, there's so much uncertainty, most businesses are laying people off. We just said earlier in the show, if you're watching the long-term format show, Epic Games just laid off 16% of their staff. That's about 870 jobs gone. A lot of these companies are laying people off. And they want to have record contracts given to them, which will increase the cost of goods sold and increase the price of a vehicle for a consumer. A big pivotal moment in Tesla came when Tesla, I believe it's their Model Y, whatever the SUV is called, that one is cheaper than the average price of a new vehicle in North America, which is an achievement in and of itself to Tesla's efficiencies. And, you know, you, you could, the more of something you create, the, the more you can drive down the cost per unit sold. So Tesla's grown exponentially, and they're not unionized. The antithesis, they actually pay them in stock. So they're incentivized to work like hell and be efficient. Now, I think that'd be a great nego I don't know if the unions, if you're part of the UAW, let me know if you would want this. Would you want stock instead of all these benefits? That would cost the company less, and it would give you more of an incentive, if you're part of the UAW, to create more streamlined processes, to work harder. There's a lot of upside to having stock in a company. There's some people assembling cars at Tesla making more money than executives at some of the companies because they have that stock. Because Tesla's doing so good with their stock on average. So I think that if I was an executive at one of the big three, that's something I would offer. Now, I don't know if it's against the UAW's ideology to take that type of a deal. It seems like they always want the upside and not the, not the downside. So it kind of seems like they would not want the stock. Let me know in the options in the comments. Do you think that would be a way to make it a win-win scenario for both sides? Or do you think they would just be against that completely? And let me know, do you get employee discounts? Do you have the opportunity to buy discount stuff? That might be another opportunity as well to create value. It'll be interesting to see at the end of the day where they fall in terms of negotiations or where they land rather than negotiations and how much it will kneecap these companies. It, it, it's certainly not gonna help them. Let me know, uh, please let me know one thing it will do to benefit to big, the big three. And again, I don't know if it'll solve my stuttering, but perhaps the cure all along would be click that subscribe button. It's never been tried or documented, but perhaps We'll find a new technique to cope with that and maybe fix that ailment that people in the comments have brought to my attention. But at the end of the day, it will be interesting to see what are the points that they just will not let up on and how much worse will the shutdowns that the factories get and the strikes get. Granted, this is, again, is a good opportune time. I think, I think there's more power or negotiation power. I think the big three has an advantage partially because People are not buying cars like they used to right now. They have record high, to record high to interest rates, really. Again, click that subscribe button, perhaps. And everyone I know, they're trying to make their dollar stretch further. They're not going out and buying a new vehicle. And the few are usually not buying something from the big three. 
So let me know in the comments, what do you think will happen? Do you think the strike will get worse? Do you think there's certain things that they'll be able to negotiate on that'll make it a win-win scenario? Is that even possible? Let me know in the comments. I would greatly appreciate what you have to say. Now going on to the business blunder of the day, you have McKinsey agree to pay $240 million over the opioid crisis. Now, specifically, it looks like they're going to pay $240 million to local schools and governments. And it looks like the consulting giant had already paid out $640 million in settlements over its involvement in the opioid epidemic. Now, according to previous lawsuits, McKinsey allegedly advised opioid makers like Purdue Pharma to, quote, step up sales calls to high prescribing Oxycontin doctors, unquote, and, quote, persuade them to write high dose prescriptions, unquote. Now, they went on to say that at least 3,000 state and local governments have sued opioid makers, distributors, and sellers over the crisis, this is according to Bloomberg, and the total payout for all the industries and all the companies is expected to be $50 billion, which is quite, quite a pretty penny, I would say. Now, in terms of this company, I don't know how much of their services and their products, it seems to be something where the average person is not really working with McKinsey, so perhaps it might not be a huge detrimental impact to their business, but to have such morally vacuous consulting advice given out, as well as having that big fee slapped onto them, I'd say that's got to be the business under the day. Thank you, everyone, again for taking the time to tune in today. I know it's ambitious, but we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of September, or rather October, because my ADHD the months go way too quick these days. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you take the time to like and comment, I really appreciate the feedback, even if it's critical, as we try to make the show better and better together. And also, lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.